The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome into my state of mind here for this Friday evening. Plus, you'll probably see the program a couple of more times. It is a pleasure to have you aboard. And our conversation tonight is an important one. House Republicans are putting pressure on the rest of the General Assembly to create oversight for things like the nursing home data and the lives of people who are constantly in turmoil with the nursing home quality of life that is happening right now. Governor Raimondo has, again, checked the boxes on pretty good leadership for this COVID-19 crisis. And I think most people believe that and the favorability ratings certainly confirm that. But look, um, let's not forget what life was like before this whole thing began, right? Meaning a COVID crisis. The Romano administration fell down on UHIP, the computer brain that runs the state, fell down on MTM, the transportation company that was uh, you know, having its challenges, had fallen down on DCYF. So it is not unreasonable to think that there could have been a better job the state might have been doing with nursing homes and vice versa. When we come back, the controversy that has existed right now over the House Republicans asking the Democrats to start oversight, whether the speaker wants it or not. Stay tuned to My State of Mind. Representative Blake Lippi and Representative Mike Chippendale will join me next. Back into My State of Mind. This is an important conversation. And today, the conversation that we are going to have has been characterized by the Speaker of the House as kind of a rogue conversation, as if uh, the two guys that I have on your screen are losing their minds. And um, the guy who's asking them questions about them losing their minds has also lost his mind. And uh, we're going to have to care. We're, we're going to have to get into that. Uh, on the top of your screen is uh, Mike Chippendale, a state representative from Foster, Gloucester, and Coventry. He's been there since 2010, and probably the senior member on the Republican side in House Oversight. And at the bottom is uh, State Representative Blake Filippi, who is the minority leader, and who has uh, really been a voice for this concept. I know it's strange, but it's called getting back to work. Uh, in, in the legislature. Guys, thank you very much uh, for, for joining me. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. So uh, I'm going to start with you, Mike, because you, you, sure. made, you made a spirited case yesterday on, on the radio show uh, about this. Before we get into the speaker's defense and defensiveness over this whole thing, tell me what your concern is in a letter that you and uh, Rep. Filippi and the House Republican Caucus wrote to members of your oversight committee for, a, uh, for an override of the speaker and the chairperson's malaise in not forming and meeting. Talk to me about it. So, yes, I mean, it's well known that we reached out uh, over a month ago to, to the speaker asking for, for us to convene. Uh, we asked for uh, uh, the assembly itself to start to figure out how to convene. Um, and we've also asked for oversight to, to convene. And it's sort of been met with, with deaf ears. Uh, so, so yesterday we have, we, have researched, uh, Leader Filippi's researched the legal end of it. Uh, there is nothing preventing uh, my good colleagues on House Oversight from doing what we always do on House Oversight. We can just literally call a meeting without uh, the, the blessing of the speaker, um, and we can meet. And, and if a majority of the members show up and we establish a quorum, uh, we can do our constitutional duties. Okay, so, you know, I asked you actually causes uh, uh, one step too fast, too forward. Uh, uh, leader, the, the issue here is concern over nursing homes specifically, correct? Blake? Ah, I've kind of lost your audio. Is that, uh, can you click that on? Let me see. If there it is. You are. All right. We won't, <laughs> we won't even do take two. Everyone's using it. <laughs> I'm an old salt with technology. Yeah. So, the issue is nursing homes. Uh, oversight has a lot of issues it needs to review, but the, the emergency, the thing that we have to get on now is figuring out what happened to our nursing homes, why 75% of all COVID deaths are in our nursing homes, one of the, the highest in the country, fluctuates between one and three, the first or second or the third worst, what we're doing now to fix it, and, and critically, what do we have to do to make sure that if this thing comes back in the fall, we don't have the same infections in our nursing homes. 
Uh, there's places that have done it right that don't have breakouts. Uh, we want to learn from them. We want to hear from the places that have had breakouts and, and speak to them about what they need from the state in order to mimic the nursing homes that have done a good job and, and not have any breakouts. All right, well, that, that makes a lot of sense, but there, there are folks that might be watching this thinking, well, wait a second, that's not kind of how we're operating in this crisis. We're uh, delegating this to Governor Raimondo. Governor Raimondo is, is evaluating this entire situation. And, you know, these approval ratings that have been, you know, floating around for the governor have understandably risen significantly. Governor Baker as well. Most governor, Governor Cuomo, you know, governors who, who have taken reins on what were the acute, certainly three, four week issues into this, which was, you know, lessening the curve, you know, making the tough shutdown decisions, you know, psychologically nursing us through the entire thing. The governor has high marks for that. But um, the questions you're asking seem to be reviewy in nature as opposed to ongoing in nature. So talk to me about that, Blake or, or Mike, either one, I'll jump in. So when you say reviewy in nature and ongoing in nature, and I think add in their planning in nature, uh, we're not trying to Monday morning quarterback. We're not trying to cast aspersions, but we hear conflicting information from our constituents and the governor's office. Uh, I'm an elected representative, as is Mike. Uh, you don't know what happened, Dan. You're in the media. I don't know what happened. I'm an elected official, and the public doesn't know what happened. That's just not acceptable. So I hope we do have a meeting, and I hope we learn that the governor did the best job and we can sing her praises. Well, I mean, we, we, know, we know that seniors are afflicted by this virus. We know that uh, the older you are and the more you have, a, you know, a comorbidity, a, a, a underlying condition, the more susceptible you are. I mean, some things speak for themselves. What is it about Rhode Island's data, Mike, that most alarms you? Well, I, I think uh, two weeks ago, the New York Times had an article where they put all United States COVID deaths in nursing homes at around uh, 33 percent, at around a third. Um, and Rhode Island is approaching 80 percent. So we're precipitously higher in our in our nursing home related COVID deaths. That in and of itself should be alarming to anyone. Um, the fact that there is is a lack of information or, or understanding of what's going on behind the scenes to try to stop this from from accelerating the way it has been, and to also prevent learn things to prevent it from uh, not only happening again in the fall when this comes back, but potentially being worse. Uh, we should be doing that now. Why would we? Why would we wait for it to end? Um, you know. The leader said something earlier today. Yeah, if we all sit around and wait, it's easy to count bodies when the whole thing's over. But I don't want to do that. None of us want to do that. We want to stop that body count from rising. Okay. We have to learn. All right. But when, when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll talk more about that concept. The, the Speaker of the House spoke uh, this morning on the radio and was very defensive about the suggestion that they need to get back into business on oversight. And we'll talk about that when we come back on Daniel State Mike Stevens. My state of mind, uh, Representative Blake Filippi, who is the Republican Minority Leader, and Representative Mike Chippendale, who is a veteran uh, member of the House on the uh, Oversight Committee, Republican as well, are, are my guests here this evening as we, and by the way, we taped this show on, on Thursday for your Friday and perhaps weekend viewing as well. We're, uh, we're one day lag in our, in our, in our program is all part of the challenge of getting back in into full throttle business. There are phases for everybody, uh, phases for the legislature. Of course, you know, a lot of the businesses as they move into phase two guys, um, are beginning to lift up. I would say that the legislature is in pre-phase forget phase one, phase two. I mean, the, the, the concept of having oversight on nursing home fatalities and what needs to be done there is almost the middle of the sandwich we got to buy lunch you guys aren't even in business now blake and i've had this conversation on the air on, on both the radio and the television repetitively but we got to remind ourselves can we at least do that in order to be able to get to the oversight parts either one of you jump in on that do do what dan i'm sorry what do, do what it's like have a general assembly session how about a roll call vote you know something like that it's got like a wall here 
you are you're, you are ca you are cashing your part time paychecks, all of you, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we, they are. We are. Uh, there's zero desire on behalf of our house leadership to ha bring people back. Uh, the House Finance Committee is meeting as it should, but the House Oversight Committee, for some reason, can't meet. Uh, they are using this sham fake task force called the COVID-19 Task Force as our, our stand-in, as our substitute, uh, has no legal authority. And guess what? It's only met once over about a month ago. Um, there's no desire on behalf of this General, General Assembly leadership to lead. Frankly, they've abandoned that responsibility, and now it's up to the members to pick up the mantle that our House Speaker has dropped. How, how, how intimate or, 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 or often has the Finance Committee met? I mean, uh, this is, they're, they're not meeting on a regular basis. The Chairman, uh, Chairman Abney, is you know, doing the work. I'm very concerned that as you get down to deadline here on June 30 to pass a budget, whatever that's going to be, and there'll be supplemental and emergency this and that. We all know that. But I'm getting very concerned that the dirty little secret about how the government is always run, uh, you know, the elephant in the room is now going to be really exposed. Maybe that's going to be the good thing. That only a handful of people <laughs> in place are decisions. You know, <laughs> Dan, that, that's amazing you say that because I just had that conversation with somebody else. I said, that if nothing else, we're going to see what a farce the committee process is as we go and form a budget, basically with three people in a room, it's going to be put before the finance committee and they'll vote on it. That, and that'll be that. That's how it's done anyway. Right. And so, uh, this, you know, you, you hope as everybody in this crisis is, is shaking and baking and modifying and working at home and changing the lifestyles, and we hear all of this innovation concept, that when we come out on the other end of this, that we will have a better way of doing business, hopefully. We have, we will have, we will have been thrown into a, a forced laboratory to change the way we think and do things. Uh, I'm not sure the General Assembly is going to join that concept. Uh, maybe not leadership. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not leadership, but I think the members may. Well, this is changing this, times. Maybe we need a change in leadership. So for the viewership that's wondering, okay, what, how do you do all this, guys? You know, you Zoom your way through this. Uh, you've said on a number of occasions you can spend five or ten grand and put a really nice tent up that's weatherproof and spread everybody out and get to the idea of work and even have public testimony, masks and all. We're now forming into phase two where we're asking people to interact with each other. Um, that, that's not a crazy idea. The you got a lot of space on the lawn. There are other legislatures in America that are doing this, yes? Virginia did it. They put a big tent on their lawn. The whole thing's a canard, Dan. It's a whole farce. We can meet. Everyone knows we can meet. Everyone knows we should meet. But our leadership doesn't want to meet, so they keep coming up with these excuses that just don't apply. I do. And, and do you have a theory on why the, the, why the leadership doesn't want to meet? I think the speaker doesn't want to have a room back here that he was losing control of back in March. He could barely hold on to it. And uh, I think he likes sitting pretty and being, you know, speaking on behalf of the House. You know, he even today was saying that he was the House. And the Senate President Ruggiero was the Senate. And so, you know, they were meeting with the governor. The House was meeting with the governor. So I, I think he likes the idea that he, one representative, is 75 representatives. And frankly, that just does not reflect the law and our American tradition. Yeah. Uh, the function of house oversight, Mike, talk to me about it. You're a veteran of it. Absolutely. How would you get this done? Let's remember a couple of things. UHIP, MTM, the transportation company, DCYF, all have been in the hot seat under yeah. office oversight. And Pat Serpa, the chairperson, has done a great job. For some reason, she's taking a powder on this one. And I don't... You know, she clearly is under the thumb of the speaker, and I wish Pat would join and talk to me about what's holding her up. What effectiveness do you think, and what time frame would you need, and, and give me this in a, in a minute or less if you can, to, to actually get into this nursing home data without doing what the speaker projects that you're going to do, which is to create a circus atmosphere? Yeah, so, so Oversight will ask, uh, will, will request information from a body, from an entity or, or part of, of the administration. Uh, we'll get it, we'll review it, we will um, perhaps ask for more materials, et cetera, and then we will call that, that agency before us, and then we'll ask them questions in real time in, in the committee process, and um, we'll learn what they're doing, where the failures are, where they may need uh, help 
where they may need uh, resources, et cetera, et cetera. And that will go back and forth on any particular issue. As you mentioned, you know, MTM, UHIP, we went back and forth. DCYF was still doing that. Um, that's generally how it works. And what oversight does by doing that, we as legislators, we have people reaching out to us all the time, whether they are, you know, they're, they're, they're in-state employee or they know someone is or whatever. They give us information that we don't typically get. And we can ask those questions in oversight. Hey, is this true? And even when we're sitting in oversight, we're getting te text messages on our phones from people who work in these departments. They're saying, the person testifying right now is not telling you the truth. This is how it actually happens. And that enables us, as as members of oversight to then while that person's on the hot seat ask them that's what we need to do here we need to ask questions what are you doing assess it and then questions question this department when we come back we'll talk about motive here both uh, on the project of nursing homes itself and, and the politics stay with us with representative blake philippi and representative mike chippendale be right back on dan york city to my state of mind here with representative mike chippendale at the top of your screen and representative blake Filippi at the bottom both republicans of course uh blake is the minority leader and mike is on uh, house oversight um a couple of things here uh, we talked about this on the radio yesterday mike and or two days ago for viewers here i want to make sure that objectives here are understood are you trying to uh are you trying to blow up the nursing home industry with with criticism with a house oversight effort? Or oh no, not at all. In fact, uh, we want to we want to help them. Yeah, let, yeah. Let me finish the question. Oh, sorry. I, it's fine. I I have learned through multiple sources on and off the air, on and off the record, that the tsunami that these nursing homes uh, got drilled by with no prep no PPP or PPE, no, no, just, and as they lost employees who tested positive, no reinforcements. Yeah. Uh, and it, it seems apparent that, that untested, unhealthy seniors from hospitals were moved back in nursing homes, which kind of lit a fire here. I just don't want to give the impression, although the nursing home industry, uh, uh, representatives don't do a very good job of defending and advocating for themselves, but the nursing homes themselves have been victims here, uh, totally. and not necessarily um, incompetent, so to speak, correct? 100%. I mean, nothing that we're doing or saying it should be perceived as an indictment of anything the nursing homes are doing. We believe, you know, first of all, there's always been a problem in Rhode Island with our nursing homes. It's largely due in part because we have such a low Medicaid reimbursement rate that they can't hire uh, proper staffing. They can't maintain proper staffing, staffing levels. And the state funding is, is drying up every year. So these folks are scrambling. Uh, UHIP has put many of them out of business. The only one in the town of Foster that where I live was out of business, third generation family nursing home, gone, because they weren't getting paid by the state. Uh, we are not trying to harm these people. We wanna come to the rescue, if you will, and, and offer, well, be their voice, because they don't, clearly they don't have a voice now. Ask the questions, what do they need? What can we do to help them? What are the resources that we can put in their direction to make them uh, better able to deal with this? Well, the, the speaker suggested this morning that a you guys are that you're political that you're kind of uh just trying to create an atmosphere here of confusion that the proper role of oversight is to take the notes after well i'm not sure what the after is in this what is the after blake what, what's the after I don't know. Is it after we lose 500 more of our seniors? Is it after we lose 1,000 more of our seniors in nursing homes? You know, the other crisis is we on oversight have investigated DCYF, UHIP. We've come in when the fire has been burning, and we've helped to put it out. Uh, right? but we don't by the way, on, on that point, and Mike, you were instrumental in, in this, uh, as in your role in House Oversight, the UHIP crisis, which, folks, is the computer brain that runs all the programming in the state, when that arced over and the governor admitted failure there, uh, impacted these nursing homes tremendously. Absolutely. Counting problem. I know for sure that there are a handful of nursing homes who have not yet been made whole financially from the crisis. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, to, I mean, they literally were, the tsunami was coming and the cash flow was nowhere. I mean, they didn't have any money. 
No, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, uh, in the speaker's comments this morning on the radio, he, he, he said that, you know, the, the, the task force is dealing with this issue. No, the task force is dealing with the financial. They're talking about the one point whatever billion that the Fed sent in. Oversight will look at the human element of it, just like we've done with MTM. We've done it with DCYF. We've done it with FNS and UHIP. We look at the actual impact on our community, on our constituents, the people who elected us to do this job that we are not being allowed to do and that that infuriates us i i understand I have a minute here guys uh the governor has been uh you know fantastic on some levels but clearly she's enjoying a lane of no burden from the general assembly i mean she's not gotten along with the speaker uh very well uh the senate president a bit more uh, amiable relationship but uh, she is running free. I'm sure it's stressful, but it's freeing in a way that she hasn't had to deal with you guys or the guys that lead you. Uh, give me 10 seconds each on, on, on where the governor is on this, and then we've got to wrap it up. I'm sure she enjoys the autonomy, but that's not the way our government is set up. We have three branches of government, systems of checks and balances. Our statutory framework for this emergency provides that we are the check and balance on the governor, and we are failing. Uh, simple as that. Mike, last word. You know, I, she is. She's enjoying the autonomy. She has the ability through the executive power to, for 30 days, to set these policies. The only check being the General Assembly, which right now doesn't exist. Next time we're in session next year, I will try to amend that law so that only the legislature can approve another 30-day extension. So she cannot go ad infinitum with these with these extensions on her executive power. All right. So listen, uh, you know, I, it's not like I've ever carried you guys water. I'm telling you, you're you're on the money on this one. And to suggest that you're irresponsible or or rogue is just, I, I don't think it sells. And I don't think the general public is going to vote. Whether they activate and feedback will be a whole nother matter. Uh, Mike Chippendale and Blake Filippi are representatives on the Republican side in the House. Thank you uh, for your time. And we'll follow up on this uh, for sure each and every day. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Well. Thank you, Dan. Continue to follow this particular saga, both on Dan York's State of Mind here on the TV and on the radio side on WPRL weekdays, 3 till 6. Uh, by the way, next week on the radio, I'm off, furloughed, it's all part of it, and we'll be back in a week or so. But we'll be back here on TV. You have a great night and a great weekend. See you.